This lesson will set our levels, grid lines, and get our foundation in place. So let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so I'm in my architectural template in Revit, and the first thing I want to do is I want to set some levels here. Um, so I'm going to jump to my elevation view really quick, and it looks like we already have our two default levels. I'm simply going to add a couple more levels here. We'll get it up to four levels. So I'm going to click on my level button. I'm going to offset, and we're going to do an offset about 10 feet, and we'll offset a couple of these extra levels here. And I'm not too worried about naming my levels at this point. Um, we're just really just get setting the stage for what's getting ready to come here. So now that I have my my levels in place, let's go ahead and set up our, our grid so we can get our foundation and columns in place for the next lesson. So let's uh, start by opening up a few of our structural views. So in this area here, my project browser, I'm going to open up and see what views I have here in my new project. So it looks like we have levels three and four, the two that we just added. So I'm going to go ahead and add level one and two into my structural plan so we can begin. Um, so to do that, I'm going to jump to my view. And we're going to go with some plan views here in my drop down. And we're looking for structural. We'll go ahead and add level one and two to what we already have going on here. So I'm going to jump to level one. And let's get our grids in place really quick. So to do that, we'll jump to architecture tab. We'll get our grids. And I'm just going to simply place my first grid. And I already have a, a layout in mind for what I want for my building. Um, so you'll, you'll really start to understand how this layout looks once I get these grids in place. So I have my first one here, and what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to space these out um, about 10 feet a piece here. So we'll go with my pick line offset. We'll set my offset to 10 feet, and we'll add about three more grid lines here. Perfect. So now we can add our horizontal lines. I'm simply going to draw the first one in. Oh, my offset is still selected. I'll just make sure you get that offset off there. Perfect. So we'll get our first line in place. And I'm going to change this one to A. And then all the ones following the one that I place here will follow in, in sequence with this one here. So we'll change this one to A on this side. Um, and we'll go ahead and hit click grids again. And let's set it offset. This time, uh, we're going to do a little different spacing here. We're going to go with 20 feet. So I'm just going to type in my 20 foot offset here. Let's set a couple of grid lines here. Perfect. So what we have here is a smaller span going across this way. We have about 10, a 10 foot span between each grid line here. And we have a larger span going on in here. So what we'll have is a larger set of pieces of footings here in the middle, along with some interesting looking beams that will get placed here a little bit later on. So now that I have my grids and my levels in place, um, another thing that's going to be really helpful is setting some reference planes. Um, when working with structure, you know there's a lot of repetition and a lot of case symmetry and working with midpoints. So I like to go ahead and set some reference planes that I know that I'm going to end up using uh, eventually. Uh, so to do that, the first thing I want to do is I want to call out some of the dimensions here. One, to remind me of what the spacing is in case I forget and I get too lost in my model. But two, that's going to help me know how to find my midpoints here. So let's start here on top. I want to get the midpoint basically running down this area, and I want the midpoints going in between these two areas. So we'll start going vertically here. So I'm going to measure the distance between here and here real quick, 30 feet. So I need to create a reference uh, plane that's going to be about 15 feet offset from my a line that's furthest left or the grid line one. So I'm simply going to, boom, get that in place. And again, I like to drag these beyond my extents. That way I don't get confused with all my line work, and I can, depending on the size of my model, I'll be able to get rid of that line later. So we know the spacing between here is uh, 20 feet each, so that's going to be about 40 feet. So this will be my midpoint, definitely, so I really don't have to worry about putting a midpoint in this area. But I do want a midpoint going in between these two spaces, and I know that's 20, so we're going to do an offset of 10 feet. 10 feet here. And I'm simply going to drag that out and 10 feet off of this one. And a little bit later on, you'll see why this will come in handy. Um, there's a really cool tool that I like to use. It's my mirror tool. And when you're working with a project that's got a lot of symmetry in it, this can really help you out and speed up your workflow. So now that we have pretty much our stage set here, um, let's pull in some foundations here. Um, what we'll have to do is we'll have to create some custom foundations. And I'll show you how we can do that real quick. Um, so again, we're going to be working in our structural plan, first floor, and we're going to go with structure here. And we're going to get us some isolated footings here. And 
I'm going to say yes to this. Rev is just asking me would I like to load some uh, families in, and definitely do. So we're going to look for some structural foundations, and we're going to go with a rectangular footing. And before I place this, I, I want to really make some changes to this. So I'm going to edit my type. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to rename this one. So I have two different kinds of footings, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the first uh, type of footing is actually going to go on the outside or the outer part of our building. And those are going to be about four feet wide, four feet uh, high by about 10 feet deep. So that's what I'm going to name this. So I always like to name my stuff that's obvious and logical with what's going on here. So we're going to go with four feet by four feet by 10 feet. And once I have that in place, I can now make those changes here. So I don't need to change my width. I can change my length to four feet. And I'm going to change my thickness or, or the depth of my footing here to 10 feet. We are going to be holding a really large, heavy concrete structure, so we're going to need some pretty beefy footings. And these might not even be sufficient, but I definitely made that change here. So now that I have those in place, let's go ahead and place these footings really quick here. So again, these are going to go here along grid line A, and I'm going to have uh, the ones going along grid line C. And I'll show you how we can use this mirror tool that I really love using. So we'll place our first row here on top. Uh, let's make sure we're on the right level here. Okay, perfect. I'm going to place there at all my midpoints. And I easily could have used the at, at grids command, but I don't have too many to place. So I don't mind clicking on four grid lines here. So now I'm going to show you how really cool this mirror tool is. So I'm simply going to highlight these four that we just placed. And there's a couple of ways you can mirror. Um, you can mirror either by drawing in uh, an axis. But we've already set our axis by setting up our midpoints and, and dividing our uh, project and layout into halves and stuff. So we'll go with the uh, mirror by picking axis. So we know that the midpoint for this one is going to be grid line B. So when I click on that, boom, those footings are automatically in place really quick like that. And you're gonna, we're going to be using this tool quite often uh, throughout this series of tutorials. And you'll really get used to using it. I'm sure you'll definitely appreciate it as well. So we can now move our attention to the middle here. We need the last row of footings we need to put in are going to be a little bit beefier because we're going to have some larger columns here. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to go structure. We're going to go with isolated. And we're going to edit this type. And this time we're going to duplicate the one we just have here. And this time this footing is going to be just a little bit different in dimensions. Um, it's going to be four foot, but four foot by six foot by 10 foot. And I don't need this two here. So we're not duplicating that last one. Now all I need to do is change this length to a six. And we are ready to place our new other footings. So I'm simply going to place these four. And once I have these in place, I'm going to jump to my 3D view just to make sure everything looks good. Everything is looking good here. And we'll jump to an elevation view, make sure our footings are placed nicely where they need to be. So I'm really happy with where we're at right now. So we're actually going to jump into the next lesson and we'll actually learn how to place some of the columns for our concrete structure.